put this thing in here is to get you to do some deep thinking. So not go by what you see, but the most important thing is to see behind and read between the lines so you can interpret things properly. So I'm happy for the ones who type five, and I'm also happy for the ones who type 10 because you are not any bit bad. It's just that it is spontaneous. So the important thing, we open our mind for what we're going to see. So where we come from, as, uh, like I said in the very beginning, all these big businesses uh, have a massive problem. Businesses that have been running for more than 100 years have one massive difficulty, and that is the consumer data challenge. Uh, and why is it a challenge? It is a challenge because you see companies that uh, are like, uh, you know, the, the, the brands that produce the products are over here and the consumers that consume the products are over here. And between the company and the company that produces the products and the consumers that buy the products, there are what we call as intermediaries. There are many, many intermediaries who actually dominate the consumer relationship. So you see here in our business, we have we produce products we sell to hairdressers who actually have end consumer contact the consumer does not buy the product directly from us the consumer consumes the product at the hairdresser and the hairdresser has the direct relationship and makes money the second channel with whom we have very good relationship is social media platforms why because we advertise on youtube google facebook instagram everywhere but do we get the data? No, the consumer leaves his or her data with all these social media platforms. And third thing, we of course sign up with celebrities and the people who have big influence on end consumers. It's just like, you know, you have a cricket star signing up for a hair gel, you will have a lot of people who will shop it. So they're called influencers. So you have all, all these influencers with whom we have direct contact and establish the relationship but they don't have uh, a relationship, they have the relationship with the consumer, but they don't give us the consumer data. So they're of course not uh, interested in doing it. So you make a post on uh, the Facebook or Instagram uh, channel of a very big celebrity, the consumers who follow him or her would naturally be interested in shopping those products. But do we get the, the data of the consumers who shop? No. And finally, of course, you have uh, the two big uh, blocks of uh, um, shops. The one is uh, offline, primarily your um, provision stores, your general mar um, uh, supermarkets, uh, where you can shop all these shampoos and, uh, and hair products, and this particular example. But if you see that uh, they will not share who is buying, they of course have their own loyalty programs, they have ways in which they will strengthen the relationship with the consumer but they will not share this with us. So you see here the big uh, names of uh, retailers that uh, dominate this space worldwide. Same with e-retailers. People, of course, can also shop from uh, online stores like Amazon. And Amazon naturally will not share any data or any consumer data with us. Now, this is a massive problem for established businesses that the new startups do not have. Like I told you, the startups believe in one thing. They set up a, a direct to consumer platform, an online store where the consumer registers and shops and directly through the shopping process is, uh, uh, is able to capture the data of the consumer and their interest. Now we are not able to do that as an established business because we have never had any direct contact with the consumer. Now, how big is the problem is this? It's bringing us a, a lot of problems. It's uh, the risk of not owning first party data. So first party data is data you collect from the consumer directly. Is number one, we are lacking deep consumer insights. Remember what I told you, what you see on the outside is just one very simple thing. It's the tip of the iceberg. But as you dig deeper is when you will figure out what is the key difference between you, your brand, your products, with the ones that, uh, that are able to sell and be a bit more relevant. So here you see that because we are not able to collect end consumer data and compute them and to uh, analyze them as well as we would like, we are not able to produce products that are relevant to the marketplace. So um, if I am looking for a particular market where you know you have people who are not interested in the brand at all and in the, in the coloration of hair at all, as an example, 
the or that particular color uh, that we are producing, then we are losing an opportunity to innovate. The second problem that we see is the cost of interaction, which will keep increasing. Why? Because the big logos that you see here, Facebook, Google, Amazon, Alibaba, and uh, name it, uh, you know, Instagram, all these big platforms have a lot of consumer interaction and they will monopolize data. Meaning, you advertise, if you want to produce a product, you know very well that you have to advertise. And you today you advertise on Google, on Facebook, and they understand everything. So when you make a like, on a post, uh, people understand, or Facebook understands your interest. Facebook knows what you're interested in, where you live, everything. So they can show you very, very interesting, uh, relevant advertising. And they would say, if you need to advertise to uh, consumers who are in my uh, community, in my network, you have to pay not 50 rupees, but 100 rupees. But just, just imagine if the shampoo bottle will cost you 100 rupees overall, and if the advertising cost is going to be 100, it is not going to help us because uh, you will not be able to sustain as a business. And that is the other uh, massive difficulty that is keeping uh, giant businesses out of reach without direct consumer data. It's the same problem with Amazon. It's the same problem with Google. You can, pro you can place your product, you have to advertise, and the cost of interaction with the end consumer is going to increase. And the third thing is targeting inefficiency. So you might have seen that uh, you exchange a, on Facebook or Google or on, uh, on Instagram on a particular topic, you immediately see an advertisement that is specific to what you have been browsing or you have been using. Um, so this is programmatic advertising, programmatic buying, as they call it in the digital media industry. It's a lot of algorithms that is uh, making that possible, that you are looking for the most specific target audience who will be interested in a particular topic before the advertisement is actually placed. So it's a, you might have noticed it a, a few hundred times when in your own browsing experience. And, uh, and that is possible because they have a lot of data. They understand what people do. In our case, as an established business, we don't have the data. And therefore, we just advertise to everyone, which means we are spending a lot of money, but not getting enough return on, on that advertising. So that is the third uh, issue. And the final one, of course, because we are not uh, seen uh, as often as uh, people would like, the chances are people will not be uh, as loyal to our brand because they don't see us on advertising. They don't see us in the shops. They don't see us uh, um, you know, in the, in the place where they would really like us to be present. Then uh, naturally, the consumer will not be shopping our products. Just imagine when you shop a one, two rupee shampoo, you don't think too much, you just buy. And uh, if you don't see this in the stores you visit, naturally at some point you will stop uh, using us. So that's uh, the risk of not owning consumer data, which is the big advantage of companies that uh, and businesses that are establishing themselves uh, by doing a direct consumer, um, direct to consumer uh, setup. So what is our solution? Uh, our solution is, uh, to be able to establish a relationship, collect relationships with consumers, collect data so that we can innovate and translate that data into uh, e-sales or sales. And our, uh, the way we are going to measure our success is to be able to collect and harvest consumer data at scale to drive sustainable business growth. Because that is basically what is going to be the future in an in an e-enabled, digitally driven world. So our solution is uh, to basically do three things and do three things right so that we get direct consumer uh, data and we are able to drive relationships. Number one, of course, is to, you know, we do have a lot of brand websites. It's a very old fashioned thing, but yes, we have websites where people come and visit us and they leave a little bit of intelligence back to us. So when you visit a page uh, with the uh, products for short haired people, you are actually telling me you have short hair. I don't need to know who you are, but you're telling me your interest. When you visit a page with uh, um, curly hair, you're actually giving me a pointer that you're interested in curly hair or you have curly hair. So that is uh, anonymously collecting consumer data, which we call as non-PII data. 
So non-personally identifiable information, but that's good enough. Your phone is uh, unique to you and your browsing behavior on your phone is good enough for me to advertise to you, whether you visit Google or Facebook or YouTube or, or Instagram. That is the first pillar. The second pillar is what we call as a loyalty program, a CRM program, which is classic. Um, when you shop our products uh, for a certain value, you get points and those points could be used for uh, redeeming on your next purchase or you get a new product for a lot less and a number of ways in which we could get the consumer to give us a bit more data. Again, it's always a give and a take. What is in it for the consumer? So he or she would share their data. So the loyalty program is again uh, another way uh, to establish a relationship we call as a CRM program. And the third most important pillar is the most uh, uh, crucial one, which we call as D2C and also IoT. So D2C is direct to consumer. So you're able to sell directly to the consumer without using any of these platforms. Uh, IoT is basically devices that are connected uh, to the internet that you can actually use to, uh, to capture data. So it's like your iPhone, you connect to your Apple Store account and Apple knows uh, every time you do something, what you do with it. So that's uh, the device is internet of things, internet uh, enabled uh, so that you're, you're able to leave data, you're able to, as a business, collect data at every interaction. So that is uh, the, that's everything that we're trying to, to do. And the one example I'm gonna focus on is uh, called Choiceify, which is a direct to consumer business uh, that we had established. It's in fact a direct to consumer service. Uh, apologies that I'm using a very uh, European example um, because people here have uh, uh, um, mostly blonde hair and they are very interested in coloring their hair. So they want to have a color for the weekend. They want to have a color during the week when they go to a concert or when they go to a, a football match, they try to have a different look. And so this is a very established industry in uh, in europe i know it's not as big in india not yet but people are starting to color their hair but uh, hair coloration is a massively important topic for the average uh, U european consumer so i hope you understand where i'm coming from so this is a european example so we came up with this application called choiceify to capture end consumer data it's a direct to consumer service that is allowing us to establish consumer contact and also uh, capture data. Now, why was uh, this uh, born? Because many people here in Europe do not know which color is the right color uh, for them and how it will, how they would look like in a particular color. So I will I will show you that in a in a very simple example. I will demo the application in a minute. So what we did was we developed a website which allows the consumer to try different colors. So you virtually do it on your phone. So without applying the color on your hair, because what you want to make sure is that when you apply the color, you look good. And uh, many people do not know how uh, and which color is the right color for them. So we give them uh, a tool where they can try different colors virtually, see for themselves how they look like. And the second thing they do on the application is they confirm the base color so your current color so i have dark hair so if i need the the ferrari red um it's not easy to get uh, so you need to first get rid of the black color and then do uh, the application of the red uh, and there is a uh, it's not easy many people buy the color because it looks great on the pack and then when they come home and they see that it is not quite what they were looking for so uh, you need to confirm your base color so the tool we have has an algorithm that was uh, built within uh, Henkel uh, to be able to recommend the very specific product for that particular consumer. And once you like what you see, and once you confirm, and how much gray cover, so here um, I don't have gray so much, but uh, people, of course, one of the reasons why they color their hair is they need to cover their gray color. And uh, when the product recommendations are made, it is made specific to the consumer. And then you click on the buy now and the, and the last step to go directly to a retailer and shop the product. The beauty is that it works in very, very simple three steps. 
and uh, you don't need to download anything. So you don't, it's not an app, it's a website. I and mean, if you guys uh, uh, want to try out this, uh, I would highly encourage you to do this after this uh, webinar. I will share the link with you. So let me um, quickly give you a demo because I uh, prepared this. So that is me, you can see. And you can see that my color, I have a split screen. See that the color is changing. Um, and I will remove the split. Let me go back to start again, so you can see. So the application starts like this. And if I now say, try now, it opens the camera on the screen and it's on the browser. So this is the, the link and I remove the split screen so you can see. So this is silver blonde as they call it. The human eye can uh, only um, uh, distinguish 25 colors, but uh, in the European consumer is keen on having a lot of different colors on. So they want a lot of uh, different options. So you see here, you're able to preview the color on your hair as you do this. And once you confirm the color that you like, the second question it asks you is what is your base color? So what is your current color? And then you can. Skip the demo, but like I just mentioned, it is a, a very simple procedure. So you go and the last step is the product and then you go directly into the retailer. Now by using Choiceify, and why did I say it's one of the ways in which we're able to collect data is that we're, we're able to uh, capture a lot of the consumer behavior. So every interaction the consumer does on this application, we are capturing data. You see here at the top left is where is the consumer currently? So what is the base color? What is the target color? So which color do they really want to have? And it's again data. Uh, so we know this on a per consumer level. We're able to understand which product they would be interested in because in the last step of the process, you would see the products appearing. Um, so maybe I can even quickly show you that. So I would uh, do this. Um, and uh, I'm hoping that it does. So it's a very uh, simple mobile application that doesn't require you to download anything. And it was uh, the, the technology that you saw in the very beginning is what we call as augmented reality. So it is not real. So in the past, if you need to try different hair, hair colors on, you need to apply them physically on your hair. And that makes it uh, extremely difficult for you to try different uh, different colors and different things. So here again, it's data driven. You see people choosing a particular target color and a particular base color that they have. So it's individualized for every single consumer. And you see the products that are going to give them the best uh, result. And what you see here, this little circle is signifying or indicating how this product would look like on their hair. So if I have dark hair, when I apply this uh, on me, I will not have this result. I will have a completely different color. So uh, it is something that the tool is providing to them so they understand how, uh, how it is uh, going to appear on them. So we're giving the consumer all what they require in order for them to shop the product confidently. And it's all driven out of data that comes out of a very, very um, strongly developed uh, algorithm. Um, from uh, Henkel. So you can see there are so many different products uh, that will provide them and then each product will give them a different result. So that's uh, that. And so, like I mentioned, we are able to understand the consumer's base color, target color, and which product they would click on. Uh, where are they located? Which device are they using? So by using this application, it's like using free Wi-Fi on, uh, in a public place. Uh, they're giving it to you for free, but then they are watching what you do and they're able to understand and therefore they can use it for advertising. So if, because I know that this customer is interested in the red, I can show the, and, and interested in this Garnier uh, product, I can present the consumer with a coupon and tell them to say, you know, I have the same color, from, but from me, you can get one euro less, uh, or you pay one euro less if you want to shop this product in one of our retailers. 
and you get this coupon if you sign up in my CRM program. So you see that uh, what starts as an unknown customer, we're slowly moving this customer into known customers, but by advertising to them very relevant uh, products and giving them a coupon that might be of interest to them. And with that, we will be able to capture the consumer in our loyalty program. And we also use this data that we collect to come up with better products. So if we, if we see that uh, 100,000 people used it and most of them have chosen brown or red or yellow or whatever color, and if we don't have enough of those products in our portfolio, we can produce those products. So that's what I mean by innovation relevance. Uh, if, I, if I have the product, but it is simply not there at a particular store, I could put that in that store and therefore I will be able to optimize my portfolio. And because I understand the consumer's interest and, and the, because here in this example, I know that he or she is interested in red color, I can advertise uh, also to them with the red. And therefore I'm advertising to with relevant material, relevant content, and therefore the consumer would be more uh, likely to respond to our um, advertising. So this is uh, the data game with which we have launched one particular um, service, which is called Choiceify in the area of uh, direct to consumer. Now we are uh, pretty big. Uh, we're starting to uh, scale this application. We have now consulted more than 500,000 consumers since uh, October of 2018. I myself have a patent against uh, this uh, application. Uh, so we blocked competition here. We have been able to test and adapt uh, the application very, very fast. So uh, all big retailers, all the, the, the top retailers in the, the world are going to have this application. We're putting them in a display in store, um, also giving the access to the store uh, staff if you walk into a supermarket and do not know which color to shop, they will be able to um, to drive, uh, they will be able to use this application and therefore drive the sales of the uh, category, which uh, in this case is uh, hair coloration. And uh, we are slowly expanding into uh, styling uh, with the focus on men, because uh, many people um, you know, uh, need a different look, um, but people simply do not know which uh, look is the right thing for them. Uh, so we're proposing to them what could be interesting uh, with different styles. People have uh, uh, innovated big time on uh, hair styling. So to giving consumers with uh, a lot of options, uh, we always say that people don't need products, they need solutions. Uh, hair is a crucial topic as far as beauty is concerned, because uh, if you look for Google statistics, some close to 15 billion um, searches were made in 2019 on Google worldwide. Uh, so it's huge. Uh, it's been very, very big uh, compared to, um, let's say, lipsticks uh, or skin or anything, because hair makes uh, a person much more um, beautiful um, or handsome, uh, depending on the gender it is. Uh, and the more, the better you look, the more confident you are. So beauty as a, as a category uh, is phenomenally uh, important. And so the styling is going to be our next venture. So our aim is to make Choiceify, which is this brand that we have launched as a service, the um, Google for anything and everything that is hair. So that is, uh, that is kind of where we are with one specific example on how we do uh, D2C. And I now leave it to you guys to ask me questions. Anyone? Hello.
Yes, I can hear you very much. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think they might not be on mute. Okay. I mean, um, I can even encourage people to type in their questions uh, that I can answer. So I'm happy to do that. Is this uh, interesting? Uh, yeah, I think it will be a large, large audience. I think uh, I don't know how voice would work. Uh, I leave it to you. So just uh, I can also answer questions on digital overall, how digital marketing works. Fine. I mean, it's. Uh... Francis, can you hear us? What do you hear? Uh, Deva? Yeah, yeah. Hello? Okay, you are waiting for the questions. Yeah. Students, if you have anything to ask, you can just ask with them. Tilak, you are done with your presentation or you have the second part to be continued? No, I just thought I will give them uh, because it. Uh, I looked at uh, all the stuff that I had and I thought that the one that would be of interest would be this because is how do we use a service to capture data? Yeah. And, uh, uh, not present everything. It's uh, it's uh, Otherwise, it will be too theoretical. So I thought okay. I would use a live okay. example. Um, so, yes. So I prepared for 45 minutes so that I thought I would yeah, I get 15 I minutes it. for people yeah, to question me. Yes, exactly. How do they develop the entrepreneur skills, you know, with more more uh, internet uh, coming in, 5G, we are waiting for that in India and so on. Yeah. And as of now, the number of users using internet in India with 130 million population is almost only 30 million. And among the 30 million, how many of them do trading online is maybe 50 percent so with that itself you know all the uh, mobile app companies uh, show a lot of profit so i i personally smell a lot of uh, business ventures open for all the uh, you know engineers like uh, our students so how do they develop the skill of becoming an entrepreneur so the most uh, important uh, attribute is uh, to be able to test and learn so I think the uh, the one area where uh, the U.S. Uh, or even for that matter Israel as a new destination for startups uh, are able to do is that they are willing to uh, they have a culture of uh, of test and learn. So failure uh, with an idea is uh, very much accepted. Uh, so it's something that people are willing to to risk and and try, uh, and they are fine if something doesn't uh, work work okay. Um, something that is not quite present uh, in in a market uh, like India. So for us in India, for example, failure is not an option. So people want to always get everything right. And we try to go for perfection. Um, and that is something that you don't see with a lot of uh, startup businesses. So the most important attribute of entrepreneurship is to uh, have the appetite, uh, the risk appetite, to try and also possibly uh, fail. You have to innovate, you have to ideate uh, and, uh, and execute. And as you progress, uh, you have to optimize it. And that's why you see all these big companies, uh, companies that came in the, into being in the late 90s have been able to do very, very well compared to businesses in India who are looking for uh, you know, uh, the moonshot pretty much with every attempt they do. So I think that is uh, the most important uh, area. You're starting to see that. You see with Flipkart, you see it with Snapdeal. All these companies are starting to try, and they came up with a very innovative uh, uh, solution when e-commerce was not even there uh, in India. So you, you are seeing it, but uh, it should be even more than it is right now if we are, uh, if we are to compete with uh, businesses uh, from the West.
Anybody else? Any other question? Okay, I think Tilak, uh, they are done with it. Uh, uh, any uh, sweet memories about the college which you can share? There's a lot of, every memory is a sweet memory <laughs> from the college, I must say. Uh, it's, however, a long time since. Uh, Um, but I, I couldn't enter the campus because I was just passing through the place uh, heading to Kutralam. So I, I couldn't drop into the uh, the campus. Uh, okay. But that was, uh, that was the closest I got to <laughs> the institute since the time we graduated. When was it the uh, la last time you were there, Deva? No, after... Um... You know, right? I, I was there after long, uh, maybe after I left. That was the last time I uh, went. I didn't go after that. You didn't go after that, okay? Yeah. Now I know that I heard a lot about the the, the stuff has changed big time. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, you will see a sea of change when you come in the campus. Uh, we'll do that. Maybe we should do that one so, uh, on one most occasion. Most welcome. <laughs> most welcome. So do you and do we, alumni yeah. events and stuff? I uh, haven't uh, yeah, yeah. seen much. We do. Yeah. We do. We do. Uh, so, in the process of that only, I was trying to reach you through Deva. <laughs> I see. Okay. So me and me and Tilak are uh, uh, very close friends of uh, that Anandas, uh, that okay. bakery guy. Bakery, yes. Okay, okay. Kadravan. No, no, the one in the... In the, not the, the Kadravan bakery. we know, but he's yes. a classmate, but uh, that bakery next to the, I don't know, the bus stop. next to that uh, bus stop, right? Yes, okay. so on to the right of the bus stop. As you exit the bus stop on the right-hand side, you find it. Krishna Govil. Yes. No, no, not in Krishna Govil. No, 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 no. Sri Viliputur. Oh, Sri Vili. Okay, okay. Right? Right, right. Next okay, Next to got the it. bus stop, there, is, there, is a, there was a famous bakery. It's called Anandas Bakery. There are Anandas two branches. Bakery. One branch was next to that. Yeah. I think they are the one who are running the restaurant right now. Are they? Okay. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Maybe Saravan and Dr. Saravan is a local guy. He must be knowing it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Good. Right. Anyway, uh, if there are no more questions to take, uh, Jairanjani, ma'am. Jairanjani, ma'am. Saravanan, Kekla. Okay, anyway, on behalf of uh, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, uh, Kare, I would like to extend my sincere thanks to both Tilak and Devanand for making it to this webinar. And uh, on behalf of all the participants present here, uh, we are very happy to hear from alumni uh, and uh, their experience and how the data is being processed and how it is being acquired and how it is being used for the business. So we look forward to have uh, more collaboration in future as well. Uh, yes. Thank you, gentlemen, once again. Thank you to all the participants. Right, thank you, week. guys. Thank you very much and for your time. Thank you. All the best. All of you. Please be Thank safe. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you.